Now, here's the harsh reality about improvisation. You are not going to be good at it. That's the truth. You have to accept that. You're not going to be good at it right away. Some people are going to be better than others, but it's a skill you have to develop. You have to practice this skill set in order to be good at it. And the only way to practice is to run games. I'm Brad Wolf, and welcome to Dire Dan, and this is about improvisation. One of the scariest things about being a game master is not knowing what's coming next. For many people, this deters them from being a game master. The not knowing what's going to happen next and not having the confidence to make things up on the spot. That fear often makes people think they can't run games for their friends. Don't let that fear prevent you from being a game master. Challenge yourself and dive into it in small ways until you get better. Just like anything else in life, you have to practice something in order to get good. And this is why I highly recommend starting small. Run short adventures. Run small campaigns. Don't expect yourself to tackle a two-year-long epic campaign critical role style right out of the gate. Ultimately, the goal of this is to have fun. So set yourself up for success by running smaller adventures and building your skill set with each adventure that you run. And this is why my campaign prep process says to start small, two simple locations, because running multiple shorter adventures is a much easier way to learn this game. This is also why I've done a list of starter adventures, because starting small is a great way to hone your skills and learn the game, especially if you're brand new at being a game master. So if you and your players are all new to this, you don't need to bite off more than you can chew. In fact, doing so increases your likelihood of not being able to finish a campaign. Start by running smaller pre-made adventures and hone your skills as you improve, then you can expand to larger, more epic sandboxes and greater, larger, exciting campaigns. But that doesn't mean these short adventures won't be fun in the meantime because you're still around the table with your friends playing a game and developing characters. That's what it's all about. So I strongly encourage you to set yourself up for success and not try to tackle the 5th edition hardcover books that go from 1st level all the way up to 15th level. Those adventures are a lot for a new DM. Don't expect yourself to do that. Now understand in theater, improvisation has rules and guidelines. The actors who do improv are just not supernaturally talented comedians. They've honed that skill over time by playing improvisation games. So they are familiar with those scenes because they've practiced those kind of scenes before. The key component to improv is that the audience is giving them fresh ideas. So the work is figuring out how to put those ideas that the audience throw at them into a scene. But they've established the parameters of the scene beforehand by telling the audience, we are going to play this game now. What are some ideas that you have for these things? What are some ideas you have for those things? So there's a structure to improv. It's not completely made up. But when it comes to role-playing games, Improv has two major categories. One is the role playing at the table, making up scenes and characters as you go in the moment. And that is a unique skill. And the only way to get that skill is practice. And the next video in this series will present those skills and give you some examples and tips on how to enact those skills at your table. Now, the second category of improvisation as it relates to gaming is the ability to make up what's on the other side of that hill when you never expected your players to cross that hill. So what you need is a bag of tricks and a list of ideas so that you can generate on the fly what is on the other side of that hill. But the main thing I wanna focus on here is don't be afraid to tackle these things. And don't let that fear prevent you from being a game master. In fact, if you are an experienced game master and you have players at your table who've expressed an interest in running their own games, but they're not sure, send them this video. Because what I want people to realize is that dungeon mastering is not as hard as you think it is. And there's a ton of great tools out there 
to help you build your skill set. And you can absolutely learn how to do this. So if you've played Dungeons and Dragons or another game like it, and you've developed a character and you've improv that character in different scenarios and bounced off of how your friends were role-playing their characters, and you've worked together as a team to tell a collaborative story, if you've done that as a player, then you have the ability to be a dungeon master as well. You have the ability to game master your own games. So the most important thing is that you face that doubt, that you overcome the fear that you're not going to be able to do this because you can. Then the next step is setting yourself up for success. But you're never going to realize that until you give it a try and you just dive in. So if you're ready to do this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe because the next two videos in this playlist are going to help you do those two things. In the next video, we will cover how to improv in your role play, how to build a scene and keep the scene going and stay in character. And then in the next video, we'll work on that bag of tricks so you'll have the ability to conjure up encounters on the fly that'll engage and entertain your friends. And ultimately, that's what all this is about, is having fun with your friends. So thanks again for visiting the Dire Den, and I'll see you next time.